Merry Christmas everyone, it's Christmas Day. I've put on my most festive jumper and I've decorated the flat. I like to go the extra mile, you know. I'm up at 3 a.m. and I've already opened my present from Ride Concepts. Thanks guys. Some fresh Vice models, nice. But I've saved opening my main present till now. I wonder what it could be. I posted a picture on my Instagram, at Ali Clarkson, go check it out, and people thought it could be socks, golf clubs, or perhaps just a can of Lynx Africa. But there was another piece of the puzzle that goes with it. A present appears. Thanks Santa. Santa. I guess Santa went off to deliver more presents, but the cute thief appears. Despite his thieving history, I got him a present too. Merry Christmas you little scamp. Anyway, back to the main story. Let's see what the cute Santa brought me. Best present ever, a 2021 inspired hex, I'm a lucky guy. No changes for this year's model, inspired nailed it so no need, but it does have an amazing new satin silver paint job to tie in with this channel reaching 100k and my eventual silver play button. Some of the details that make the street trial frame so good is the tapered head tube, which comes pre-faced for better headset fitting and longevity. An amazing BB yoke which is both light and strong. And like the head tube, the BB shells also faced. It also has possibly the neatest disc brake mounts I've ever seen. And the bolt through axle keeps things perfectly aligned and stiff. Those details plus the amazing finish, build quality, geometry and custom support makes Inspire the best Street Trials brand available. This is the Hex model which has 26 inch wheels because, you know, a Hex gun has 6 sides. I prefer the bigger wheels but all of these details carry on over to the 24 inch 4 play model too. Looks like a box of bike parts. You try writing without opposable thumbs. I was right, a box of parts which includes the matching hex forks. These have a threaded steerer tube and matching top cap with an opening for a front brake cable to pass through. Plus a 15mm box through axle, although the team model comes with 20mm. I just didn't have a 20mm hub available and a matching post mount for the brake. Santa didn't quite bring me everything on the list so I will have to borrow some parts from my old bike. I still have plans for this frame but for now it's time for storage. This Chris King headset is two years old now, but still perfect. Let's fit it. I'm not even sure if this present was for me. The cute Santa got me a 90 by 25 FSA stem. It's a little different, but I think it looks pretty cool. It's actually meant to run with a negative rise, but I like to think positively. That's much better. Also, every time a steel bolt is replaced with titanium, an angel gets its wings. By the way, if you want to know why I cut these slots in my headset spaces, then check out my top 5 street trials hacks video, link in the description. I cut the fork down and yeah, I know the top headset race isn't fully fitted, but the length is still good. The best bike needs the best bars and the best bars are inspired bars. Bars. I let out a call to announce the build, as is tradition. I've built a lot of bikes this year and this hex definitely wins the nicest finished award not had a BB going this smoothly for a while. 
Like the headset, this Chris King BB is two years old and feels brand new. It's pretty impressive. So I'm not sure I've been watching the news lately, but it's getting harder and harder to find cranks with both a steel 24mm axle and SRAM style spider fitting these days. I don't trust alloy axles, and they don't trust me, and I can't fit the awesome inspired one piece bash and sprocket to Shimano cranks yet. Hint hint inspired. Keith Thanter did his research and got me these SRAM NXGXP cranks, which do have a steel 24mm axle and fit the inspired bash. I heard rumours of a furry wee guy trying to steal Danny's £1,000 titanium cane creek cranks. I think Danny would have noticed though. Hmm, this really shouldn't have this wobble. Right, I thought these cranks trusted me, but they don't. I'm going to have to do something about that, but to make working on them easier, I'm going to fit the seat post so I can clamp it instead of the frame. It's an inspired tripod BMX style seat post, and I hope this Hope seat clamp doesn't clash with the red Chris King parts. Now the cranks can spin, or not. Let's see what their beef is. Annoyingly, despite having a 24mm axle, where the non-drive bearing sits is actually narrower. My old crank shows the difference. So despite having new cranks, I'm actually going to use my old ones. They were a little beat up, so I filed down any deep gouges and stripped them silver. They look a little bit more presentable now. The silver doesn't quite match, but I'm not going to let that ruin my Christmas spirit. These cranks are lighter, so that's a plus. Actually, maybe I like these more than black. Speaking of black, my carbon light bicycle rims are two years old now too. I'll get some new ones at some point, but there's no real reason to stop using these just yet. I'll change the tyre though, I really like the Maxxis Crossmark Mark II, but I found some new models in the box. I have a rim pack insert in here, I've not had it out since fitting the tyre, so let's see if the rim pack has had any impact. Yes, yes it has. Best inserts ever. I think it's fair to say my sealant dried up. Latex sprinkles anyone? I normally clean my rim in private, but I'll bear all for you guys. I find GT85 and elbow grease works well for old latex. After a while, and some blisters, the rim will look brand spanking. Ready for the fresh kicks? I actually have a choice of kicks. One knobbly, one slick. Mr. Knobbly is a Maxxis Icon 2.2. Same rubber that I liked with the cross mark, but a little lighter and faster rolling. Mr. Slick is a Lagos snakeskin, Mafia BMX's own brand. I normally don't like fully slick tyres for street trials, but it's grey, so it's cool. Now fit Mr. Knobbly first. A new bike gets a new insert. The old one has years of service left, but it'd be rude to refuse the cute Santa's gift. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. For the price, weight, protection, and ease of fitting, the rim packs are hard to beat. They come with their own valve too, which is nice. People can be put off inserts thinking they're hard to fit, but these are actually pretty easy. The key is to get the tyre bead under the insert and into the rim's channel to give as much slack as possible. If the end is a tight fit, then go back around and make sure all the bead is actually under the insert. And there you go, tyre and insert fitted with no tools needed. And yes, the tyre is on backwards. No, that wasn't on purpose, and no, I'm not going to fix it. I inflate it without the sealant to pop the beads into place. The insert makes this a lot easier than without it. Super easy. 
Now the beads are in place, I can add sealant through the valve to avoid any embarrassing spillage. I quite like continental sealants, but any of the big brands should work well. This was a super easy tubeless fitting. Unlike the front, purely down to not running an insert in the front wheel. What a mess. Despite the spillage, it was still possible to do with just a home track pump. Can't complain at that. The million dollar, euro, pound question is, what PSI do I run? Well, it depends on the tyre, but with these, I'd be around 40 PSI. Totally mixing up my brake situation for this bike. Let's put these Clarks on as a start. And with a name like that, it's not a real surprise they're so good looking. Loving it so far. Now I don't fancy riding chainless, so let's bolt on a KMC Z1E HX. I measure once, and cut once. Nailed it. But still needs attention. Two year old Chris King hub still sounding like an absolute unit too. I reuse my homemade titanium leaf spring tensioner. It weighs less than 20 grams, it's almost impossible to break and provides a nice tight tension. It's not sounding very smooth though. With great dexterity, I remove it again. The plastic slider is over a year old now, so it's time to replace it. I use polymorph plastic that can be moulded into shapes and sets into a nylon type plastic. This new slider should run a little bit smoother. Inspired to use a custom tension amount, but you could make something like this to fit normal bikes too. Before. And after. Much better. Gonna add to the stop redos, so let's flip the bike around. I've been using SRAM code brakes on my mountain bike for a year, and I'm a big fan. Nice lever feel, good power and adjustability, so they got added to my list. Inspired's disc mounts are actually plus 20mm, so without adapters it fits 180mm rotors front and rear. I normally use 200mm rotors, but I love the look of no adapters, so I'm going to see if 180mm is powerful enough. Fitting the front brake is more labour intensive, as I like to thread it through the steer tube for a cleaner look and so it doesn't get tangled in certain tricks. I carefully cut off the shroud cover, as this won't fit through my forks. I may still be able to reuse it though. Now to remove the hose. And then insert it up the fork's arse. And refit. Done right, no fluid should spill. I need to add some foot stabbers. In spite of updated their team pedals, they're a little sleeker, but if the older ones anything to go by, should still be very grippy and reliable. As mountain bike pedals get flatter and flatter, it's nice to see a brand still using some concave. I was tempted to go for a magic fit, but chickened out. Silver and red seems to be the theme, so red ODI long neck grips appeared.
Another one of my top five street trials hacks, some Suguru moldable rubber on the back of the levers to stop them cutting my knuckles. And no, that's not due to bad lever placement, it's just something that happens when riding trials. I fit a matching inspired tripod chair thing. Look at me thinking I'm almost finished. The fool! That short bounce made me think this stem is just a little bit too short. There's also this 100mm stem in the box, so let's try it. Changing stem is actually a pain in the ass. I have to be so careful not to spill any brake fluid every time I swap. Now I've been riding a lot of longer comp style bikes lately and I feel a slightly longer stem will make swapping back to this bike easier as it won't feel quite so cramped. As my riding career continues I'm finding I'm doing fewer and fewer BMX style moves and having more fun just riding general trials like I used to. A slightly longer stem will give me a little bit more room in the cockpit for the traditional trial stuff and help make the Hex a really great all round trials bike. And while we're on a red binge, cute Santa provided red light bicycle decals. Let's see how it looks. I think it can be easy to overdo colour coordinating. I'm not sure if this looks good or if the cute Santa has just gone too far. While I make up my mind on the redness, I'm going to add some radness. Sorry. I've been working with Hook It products on some signature frame protection kits. We've come up with this really cool geometric camo pattern influenced by harsh angles of walls when found riding street. There's also a few easter eggs hidden in the pattern if you look hard enough. First I clean the frame with some rubbing alcohol. And then I cut out the stickers I use and figure out exactly where I want them. I'm keen on this for the top tube, but you can put them anywhere you like. And then carefully apply. They're a great way to customise the look of your bike, be it a trials bike, mountain bike, BMX or whatever, and keep the paint protected, which keeps the bike's value higher if you ever come to sell it. This was the first sample, production ones would be a slightly lighter shade. But I'm really happy with working with Hook It. Check out the description for updates on how to get your own kit. I went and had a brew and sat and looked at the bike. I've decided it's gone too far with the red. They're all different shades and I think subtle would be better. I guess that's what happens if you let a cat choose your parts for you. They are red green colour blind after all. Let's change things up. Red long necks swapped for black long necked lock arms. Red stem swapped out for my black stem I was using on my old bike, a giant 95 by 25 I felt comfy with this stem, so it makes sense to use it again. Rim decals removed, I'll probably get some black decals for some stealth branding later. I also swapped out the rotors, as I noticed the pads weren't really making full contact with the rotor. These ideally need deeper brake pads to work their best. So I've put on some Magura rotors, although I may get some SRAM ones after Christmas. At least these work much better with the pad size. And here's what it looks like now. I think that's much better. Just a subtle hint of red is all it needs. And here it is with the grey tyres. I quite like it. What do you think? Still not convinced on these tyres for actual trials use, but for skate parks and pump tracks, that'd be great. I'd probably stick with this look for most of my riding. I'd still love to try some tan walls, but it's hard to find anything suitable these days. Excusing his colour choices, overall the cute Santa did a great job with this year's present. Nine point eight kilos. Happy with that. My goal was to get it under ten kilos, so succeeded. I think it would be hard for me to get it much lighter than that and still be reliable. 
can't wait to get these brakes bedded in and get this bike ridden. It feels nice and tight and fresh. Both the cute thief and I wish everyone a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. It's an odd Christmas this year, so we really genuinely do hope everyone is holding out and is able to enjoy themselves no matter your situation. Thanks so much for watching, now go enjoy your day and I'll see you next time. See ya! Special shout out to all these folk. These are my Patreon followers and they really do help me make these videos. If you want to join them, the link will be down in the description. We've got people like Koi White, we've got people like Radu Steven, hope I said your name right, Robin Borman, who have we got here, Ian Johnston, how's it going dude, James Morris, we've got Tom Wally, Jonathan Cobb, and we've run out of time.